Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I mentioned not so long ago about the problem in California with the attorneys and their trust accounts. And uh, the state bar was cracking down on how the paperwork was done on those accounts. And at least 1,600 attorneys had not done the proper paperwork with the state. And so the state cracked down on them and actually moved them to inactive status till they got their act together. But I mentioned before that there are a lot of different professions where people are holding on to other people's money. And that often leads to problems. So I remember reading about a situation before where a funeral home operator got in trouble because they were telling people they could prepay for a funeral. So you're still walking around among us living people and you think, you know something, I'm going to pay for my funeral now so as not to make any hassle for anybody down the road. So there are funeral homes out there that will take the money and say, yeah, we'll take this money, we'll set it aside, and then when you pass away, we will pay for your funeral with this money. Makes sense. Except that somebody's going to be then holding your money for quite some time. And it just invites people to do bad things with the money. And, of course, the people who are taking the money go, well, as long as I pay it back, I'll be okay. And then if they're holding money for a bunch of people, well, as long as I pay most of it back, I'll be okay. And then, of course, it gets out of hand. So there's a story here that Joseph sent me from W-R-A-L. Woman says money meant for funeral was stolen. So this all comes down after a woman who was a former funeral home director was charged two years ago with embezzling money meant for people's funerals. Now there's new accusations. The TV station spoke to a woman who says she just discovered that the money she paid in 2018 for funeral services is missing. She told the TV station, I thought, you know, of all the places to steal money, a funeral home? The woman says in 2018 she went to the funeral home and both she and her husband purchased pre-need contracts for their funeral uh, cremation services. So it's a pre-need contract. And they always try to find a nice way to phrase this. Um, funerals are expensive. At least they can be. And some people choose to prepay for their own services so that it's not a burden on their family later. These are called pre-need funeral contracts. The woman has receipts showing that the woman who was charged sold her approximately $4,000 in services, but those would be future services. And uh, she gave me all the paperwork, gave me a receipt for my check and all that. Uh, and I thought that was the end of it, uh, she told Channel 5. A few months later, that woman took over the funeral home, changed the name, and then in 2021, the funeral home closed. But the woman who purchased her pre-need contract wasn't worried because it said that the uh, contract was registered with the North Carolina Board of Funeral Services, and supposedly there will be some way to take care of this even if that funeral home goes out of business. So the woman says, after she went out of business, I still didn't worry because I thought it was where it needed to be, and I knew any funeral home could get it, supposedly. So she went to double check, and she talked to somebody at a funeral home who decided to look into it. And the first thing he said to me when I showed him all my paperwork was, where the letter was from the state. I said, I don't have one. And he said, oh, she took the money. So apparently, when you take the money and you're holding it in a situation like this in North Carolina, you're supposed to notify the state, and the state's supposed to send you a letter telling you what your rights are and so on. If you don't have that letter, it means that that letter to the state was probably never sent. The man at the funeral home that she was talking to said, when I find out it's not registered, that's a red flag of embezzlement. Red flag of embezzlement. So TV stations team started digging into the woman's past who ran the funeral home and found that she trained as a funeral home director uh, under the guy who owned the funeral home. He was the director until 2018. And then, of course, that's around the time when the North Carolina Board of Funeral Services found that he falsely filed death certificates in order to claim approximately $15,000 in pre-need funeral funds. So the money was being held... And he wanted to get his hands on it, so he had submitted a death certificate and say, this person died, I need the money to bury them. Except they hadn't died, and he wasn't burying anybody. So anyway, that man's license was revoked, and that's when the woman took over the business and renamed it. Uh, but she then ran into her own issues. Uh, she was charged by the police and the prosecutors, of course, for six counts of embezzlement, for embezzling pre-need funds, and the North Carolina Board of Funeral Services also revoked her funeral director license. The North Carolina Board of Funeral Services has a recovery fund to help people who have lost money to pre-need embezzlement. Board says the fund has paid out nearly $56,000 to victims 
in seven other uh, cases connected to this funeral home. During the interview with Five on Your Side, the other funeral home director said he believes there are probably more victims out there. It's more than likely. And if they haven't passed away yet, well, nobody then has looked into, gee, is that money still there? So the TV station wanted to ask that question to the people at the funeral home. So they called and checked addresses, but nobody got back to them. So meanwhile, um, the funeral home pleaded guilty, the woman who runs it, to the six embezzlement charges and took a deal that included probation and paying restitution. And the case against her was closed, but the police have reopened the investigation now. And detectives want to know if there are other victims out there. So the TV station asked North Carolina Board of Funeral Service Director Stephen Davis what people need to know when they sign a contract for a pre-need funeral service. Consumers have the option to pay for funeral goods and services at the time of death by making arrangements for a funeral or memorial service with a licensed funeral home of their choice. Those wishing to fund a funeral or memorial service prior to death may do so working with a pre-need sales representative from a licensed funeral home. The representative must hold both a pre-need sales license and a license either in funeral directing or funeral service. A pre-need sales contract may be funded either by an insurance policy or by a trust account at a bank or similar financial institution. So the trust account here is very similar to the trust account that many attorneys have got. Pre-need contracts may be inflation-proof, which a pre-need sales license can explain. Licensee can explain. Once a consumer has signed a contract for pre-need funeral services, the funeral home is required to register that contract with the North Carolina Board of Funeral Services. Within 30 days of registration, the board will send the contract purchaser a letter confirming the contract's registration with the board. So if you've done this in North Carolina and you didn't get that letter, you might have an issue. And think about the dangerous game you're playing. You're running a funeral home, you're taking money and putting it in a trust account, And if you're doing this right, letters are going to the people who have done this with you, telling them, by the way, here's how it works. And um, the money disappears. That's going to catch up with you. How could it not catch up with you? And so the only thing I can think of is that quite often the people who do this go, well, I've got the money here for 25 people. If I were to borrow half of it, I still got the money for the first 12 or 13 people, right? And so as those people pass away, I can still pay for their funerals. And then I can sell some more between now and then. And so as long as I just keep enough money in that account to cover the upcoming funerals and I sell some more, and it becomes a Ponzi scheme. It becomes a Ponzi scheme, except that you're simply taking money from the most recent investors and using it to pay for the funeral services of the earlier investors. And it's a crazy concept. That's exactly what it is. And it's a dangerous thing because right now, if you're in North Carolina watching the news and you see this going on, your first thought is, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should not do a pre-need funeral service contract. And yet all of the other funeral homes out there that are doing it right are going, wait a second, (laughs) We're, we're doing it right. We're doing it legally. And so this is a great example of one where all it takes is one person to do this wrong. In this case, it was two. But they do this wrong, bad thing here with that money. And it makes the entire industry look bad. And so, I, you know, most people don't like to think about funerals and only deal with them when a loved one passes away and somebody's got to deal with it and take care of this. And so funeral home directors have got an extremely difficult job. There's a great book out there called The Prophets of Death, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, Prophets of Death, written by a guy who was a former funeral home director. And I had him on a show of mine years and years and years ago and interviewed him. I'm sure the book is still out there. And he was talking about all the crazy things that happen in the industry. And it's unfortunate because it's at a time when people are most vulnerable that they're dealing with a funeral home. So your spouse dies, your father dies, your child dies. And you're at a funeral home talking to a funeral director. It's an extremely difficult job they've got because they're dealing with people like you all day long, seven days a week, you know, year round. But the good ones do it well. The bad ones give them all a bad name. So this is a crazy one, but it looks like the state's got something in place to make sure these people don't get, you know, left hung out to dry. But then again, who's picking up the tab on that?
So that's the unfortunate part. So woman says money meant for funeral was stolen, and it appears to have been stolen by a woman running a funeral home that had already been shut down once for doing the exact same thing by its previous owner in North Carolina. So crazy story. Joseph, thanks for sending it from WRAL. Story was um, published by them. Five on your side doing the great work there. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Pursue what catches your heart, not what catches your eyes.